In John 15, Jesus says that if we abide in him and his word abides in us, we'll ask whatever we want of the Father and it'll be done for us. And all too often, we as Christians take that scripture to mean that we can come to him and we just ask for anything that we want. Uh, right we want to have a good day we want to have restful sleep we want god to protect us when we drive we want to have um, a prosperous business and we come to him and we pray these kind of prayers and not that there's anything wrong with those kind of prayers but they are not bold powerful prayers y'all prayer is literally how we access the power of heaven to bring change in the atmosphere of earth the power at heaven, of heaven is at our fingertips when we pray. He tells us in Hebrews to come boldly before the throne room of grace that we can receive mercy and help in our times of need. Are we coming boldly in prayer? For years, my prayers were these weak, pitiful little prayers of God help me, God change him, God please move here, please bless this food, please give me a good night's sleep, please you know, help resolve this conflict within my work relationships. But there is a bigger world outside of our own personal small needs. Not that our needs aren't important to God. They are. And Peter, it tells us that he cares about the things that we care about. We can certainly bring those things, but we should be bringing bigger things to him as well. We should be praying for our leaders, praying for our nations. There's not a nation on this planet that is not desperately in need of God in need of revival, in need of a great awakening. We should be praying for revival within our churches, for people to turn back to him. We should be praying for the lost people that we love, for our relatives, for our neighbors, for the people that we meet as we go about our daily life. We should be praying intentionally, real prayers, because you all, we have a very real enemy. The Bible describes him as a roaring lion who prowls around seeking who he can devour. He is not messing around. And here we are praying these weak prayers for comfortable lives. We need to be engaged actively in spiritual warfare. And prayer is how we do that. So today as we think about how to abide in prayer, I want us to not be thinking about abiding in prayer as in praying more small prayers. I want us to be thinking about how to pray in powerful ways as we access the power of heaven. How can we be praying to truly change the atmosphere on this earth toward an atmosphere that knows God, that loves God, that honors God in the way that they think and believe and act and and press that on? That's how we abide in a way that pleases the Lord.